I never thought the day would come when I would have to quote a Fox News host as the voice of reason in a world that is diving down the rabbit hole. But here I am, never say never. Why? Because Tucker Carlson's rant this week against bombing Syria and potentially starting a third world war made total sense. For once, I was actually wishing US President Donald Trump would follow the advice being offered to him by that television channel he watches so religiously, much to the exasperation of his critics who despise it. Carlson noted how both Democrats and Republicans were in a bipartisan tizzy, with the mainstream media in tow, pushing for military intervention by the United States over the latest suspected chemical weapon attack in Syria. Now, more than 40 people, many of them children, were said to have been killed on April 4 in the rebel-held Damascus suburb of Douma, which Western powers have automatically blamed with no proof whatsoever on Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. How would it benefit Assad using chlorine gas last weekend? Well, it wouldn't. Carlson argued. He went on to say Assad's forces had been winning the war in Syria. The administration just announced its plans to pull American troops out of Syria, having vanquished ISIS. That's good news for Assad. About the only thing he could do to reverse it and to hurt himself would be to use poison gas against children. Trump bombed Syria a year ago after dozens were killed in another chemical attack that was blamed on Assad, with the US and its allies refusing to entertain the possibility that ruthless rebels trying to incriminate government forces might well have been responsible. The fact is, chemical weapons in this horrific civil war have been used by both the Syrian military and rebel groups, some of whom are extremely nasty outfits and nothing like the champions of democracy they are regularly portrayed as by the West. This sort of talk, by the way, is instantly condemned by the mainstream narrative as heresy. Facts and legitimate doubts be damned. Now it's happening again with the US and its British and French global policing cronies raining more than 100 missiles on Syria. Deja vu to some extent, but the truly worrying caveat this time is that the Russians, who have boots on the ground to prop up the regime, are looking to retaliate. Now that would be a very alarming escalation indeed, and far more informed commentators than me, as well as senior officials involved, are warning of the real threat of a third world war. We are prepared to sustain this response, Trump said, and this time he has war junkie John Bolton as national security advisor to convince him of the need to risk a global conflict. Carlson also asked important questions that the jingoists baying for blood have no cogent answer to. Would it make America safer? Would it make the region more stable? Well, let's see. How exactly did regime change work in Iraq and Libya? With Assad gone, who would run it exactly? Do we have another strongman in place to install, or is it our hope that a stable democracy will magically appear in the wake of this protracted civil war. Well, just a few years ago, when he was warning his predecessor, Barack Obama, to stay out of Syria or risk the end of the world, Trump regularly sent out tweets such as this. Be prepared, there is a small chance that our horrendous leadership could unknowingly lead us into World War III. Well, suffice to say, there's more than a small chance of Armageddon under his own horrendous leadership this time. Well, too bad about his chronic amnesia, but maybe we can hope against hope that Trump will still heed advice on Fox News that's actually worth taking. Now, I wrote this column about a week ago. Uh, this was on the day that the U.S. actually bombed Syria. I received tons of feedback from our readers. Uh, let me share some of the interesting ones with you. I have the good, the bad, and the ugly in terms of what people are writing to me. Uh, let's start with this one. Yondan Lato repeated a common refrain that there is no rational reason for the Syrian president to use chemical weapons against his own people. This is wrong, the reader says. To deny his incentive to terrorize is to deny the realities, the realities of this conflict. True, the Syrian army has been gaining ground, but this is a civil war. Assad cannot re merely beat the rebels in the field. He must demonstrate absolute power. He must turn the very idea of resistance to dust. Well, all very nice, but still, we don't have proof for it. You don't have to listen to Yondan Lato. Uh, maybe you've heard of Robert Fisk. He's one of the most famous journalists in the world, and he's on the ground in that particular uh, Syrian uh, town. And uh, he's been saying that he's found no evidence whatsoever. People have been telling him that the chemical attack actually did not happen. I'm not saying it. Robert Fisk is on the ground. He's saying it. So let's see what turns out to be the truth. Here's another one. It's Iraq 2.0. Remember the WMD that they used as an excuse and never found? In fact, let's go back in recent history and find other examples in our neighborhood. Remember Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos? It's always whites bombing non-whites. You know why, don't you? I guess I can venture a guess. Uh, but this is material for another column altogether. Here's another one. Um, spot on, Yondan. The frightening thing is that the US and its so-called allies need so little excuse to invade and bomb another sovereign country on a charge which practically everyone knows is faked. 
Right. I mean, they did exactly that during the Iraq war. Well, not everyone has nice things to say to me. Listen to this one. Yondan, I wish you didn't write this article. You could do better than this. Third World War and Fox News. Please, we deserve better. You know it too. I'm sure you deserve better. I'll try better next time. Uh, this reader doesn't like Fox News, so he didn't, liked, he didn't want to read my article because I quoted Fox News. The moment this writer quoted a Fox journalist is the moment I stopped reading this article. I'd say you should open your world. You should watch Fox News as well. I'm not a Fox fan, but I have started watching because they do have interesting things to say. And one more for the road from a hater. Go back to writing about how you were robbed on an aircraft. True journalism is beyond you. Okay, that's uh, harking back to an article I did write about being robbed on an aircraft, and uh, I suppose this reader is still hung up on that. And those were some of the comments I received for the article I wrote on Syria. I'll be writing more articles, and I welcome feedback, whether positive or negative. Keep them coming. I'm Yondan Latu for the South China Morning Post.